What's going on, everybody? This is the drop for Thursday, June 18th. I really don't know what day it is. I've never been this disconnected from the date. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. I want to tell you about one awesome podcast episode that came out this week from Beyond the Pond. Beyond the Pond, as you all hopefully know, uh, is co-hosted by Brian and Dave. What they typically do is take a look at a piece of fish music, like a jam or even a part of a jam, and talk about it, but then also use it as a jumping off point to talk about other music. Um, They were one of the first podcasts to join Osiris, and they're good friends. They do great stuff. Um, Every time I listen, I learn something. I I was a guest once, and I had a lot of fun going deep on Miles Davis with them, uh, among other things. But they also do a lot of non-fish stuff, and this is one of them. So this episode is Dave and Brian running down each of their lists of the top 10 albums of 2020 thus far. So there's a ton of music discussed from Fiona Apple to Rose City Band to Real Estate to Stephen Malkmus. Those are four albums that I've listened to a bunch and that I really like. And honestly, tons of music is discussed that I'm not familiar with. And that's one of the great things about their podcast. I learn something and then I I find albums that I need to go back to and albums that I need to, to dig deeper on. So if you want to learn about new music and hear musical opinions from some good dudes, Beyond the Pond is for you. So I'm going to share a brief snippet of, of the episode here, and spoiler alert, we're actually going to play the part where they talk about their number one album of the year so far. So check that out in a minute. I should also mention that episode 100 of Beyond the Pond is coming out on June 30th with a very special guest host, so stay tuned for that. If you don't subscribe, subscribe so you don't miss episode 100. Um Anyway, I hope you like Beyond the Pond. I hope you like this interview snippet. I'm going to get into it in a second. And I just want to say that, as we have been saying, that music, we think, can help be part of the solution for what's going on in our terribly racist, violent society. Uh, We hope things are changing for the better. And we hope that you would consider making a donation to an organization working to fight against racism, police violence, and inequality uh, at organizations like Color of Change, NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Campaign Zero, Black Lives Matter, the National Bail Fund Network. Um, Check them all out and uh, try to make a donation. Let's get into that interview, that episode snippet with Brian and Dave from Beyond the Pond. And I hope you all enjoy and hope you all learn something more about music. See you tomorrow. I want to say 11 top album episodes if you take in our top albums of the first half of 2017, 2018, top albums of the years of the three years we've been doing this podcast, plus albums of the decade, plus all the album lists that we did for the 2010s. And never once have we had the same favorite number one record. But that all changes here. Mm. And I want to give a big shout out to dear friend of the pod, John McGar, who passed this record to me in early March and I threw it on I did a quick search for it and saw that one of our favorite writers and former guest of the pod, Grayson Haver Curran, fantastic writer, wrote a review about the record. And um, I always loved the way that he kind of can showcase and unearth thoughts about music that I am really interested in through his writing. And I think I passed it to you then. And we have been listening to this record kind of in tandem for the last eight weeks. Yeah, I think I might have first heard a song on Jeff Conklin's avant getter that I enjoyed, but I was half asleep when I heard it because that show runs late. And then I read Grayson's review of it and he was, spoke very highly of it. I think it was like a 7.9 pitchfork review. And this sounds like it was in my wheelhouse. And then I listened to it and I said, oh, this is definitely in my wheelhouse. And I think you like maybe the same day you sent me a photo of it. I wrote back like, yeah, once through, this is great. And ever since then it grew on me like a weed. And one of those records that kind of has a little of everything we're looking for. Yeah. A little bit of Richard Thompson, English folk, a little bit of, um, Wilco doing spiders, a little bit of crazy horse jam, uh, even some fleet foxes, just like kind of, a melange of our brains put together in an excellently well written, excellently produced album. Like I've gone back and listened to some of um, the older Arboretum records. I think this is their seventh album, and 
it may have taken them like seven records to get it totally right. Like I know some of the older records, certainly there's several good songs. I know the one I kind of gravitated to was one from 2013 called Coming Out of the Fog, which was a little heavier, a little more on like the Zuma crazy horse tip. Whereas uh, this one, Let It All In, is more English folky. But it's just... It has everything that we look for in an album in an excellently produced and excellently written package, and it's pleasing to the ear, I think. Yeah, yeah. all those things you said. Um, if we haven't said the album title, it's Arboretum's Let It All In. Uh, this is a record that... Um, yeah, like what I was saying earlier in terms of where my interests are at this point in time where what I want to hear musically and kind of a record that can like take me to a lot of different places, but still have like a center. Uh, this record really does that for me. And I've listened to this record. Um, I've, I've really taken to taking long drives since quarantine began. It's one thing that I have the benefit of that. Unfortunately you don't being living on Manhattan Island. I took some long drives this past weekend. Actually, I like drove down to the Rockaways and, drove back without ever getting out of the car. (laughs) It's a good thing. It's a good thing. (laughs) I, I've been doing that since March and this record has soundtracked a lot of those drives. And, uh, I found this really cool, like hour and a half long loop that I can take up into the mountains and back to Arvada. And, uh, this record's just soundtracked that. And, um, it's my escape from quarantine in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, also, another influence I forgot to mention was in one song, uh, the song called Buffeted by Wind, maybe my favorite song on the album. The guitars sound a lot like Fables of the Reconstruction Era R.E.M., just like that jangly southern goth that uh, Fairport Convention's producer Joe Boyd really um, got out of. I think actually not producer, he was in Fairport Convention, Joe Boyd. He produced uh, Fables of the Reconstruction, R.E.M.'s third album. And I heard a lot of that in, um, in Arboretum. But yeah, just like Brian was saying, top to bottom, hits all of our zones like a pinball in, in a pinball machine. So I think, what are we going to play off this record? Let's do How Deep It Goes. Album okay. opener is such a fantastic song. Yes, fantastic song, fantastic guitar solo, courtesy of uh, the front man, Dave Human. I think his name is, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I think he got his start as uh, Will Oldham's backup guitarist, which makes complete sense. Yeah. If you, yeah, very much so. So let's listen to How Deep It Goes by Arboretum from Let It All In.
thank you all for hanging with us here. 